Hi everyone and welcome to another episode in our Unreal Engine 4 tutorials. This video is a result of a poll for September that my Patreons and my YouTube members have voted for. And this month they voted for a dynamic camera system for the third person character. So what is a dynamic camera system? Well, in my definitions there are three types of cameras. You have static, which is just the camera stays up in the screen or is looking down on the whole entire field like so and doesn't move at all. Then we have active cameras and that's where the traditional, we play the game, you can move the camera and you can choose any active position for that camera. And then finally we have dynamic cameras and dynamic cameras are when the camera is in a static position but has some control over it. And we call it dynamic because it is going to be changing its position and rotation based on what we set it to follow. Now you see these a lot in a third person action games. Um, so for example, a lot of common ones such as like Uncharted, Tomb Raider and uh, Devil May Cry series uh, and as well as many other series as well. And it's whenever you want this camera to be taken away from the control from the player and given a much more uh, rigid but still tracking the player's movement as they move around the level. Okay, so we're looking at replicating that camera system for our game. So what we're doing in this one here is you can see we've got a load of camera setups like so and this is all because it's handled by one single object and that one single object um, we can change various settings on it such as its start point and its end point as well as or whether we want it to be stationary so this one here is not stationary so it moves slight in it moves left and right and so forth and this one is stationary which means it just rotates and looks around at the camera uh, at the player so that's what we're working on today so to get started let's create a whole new actor so I'm going to create a new blueprint class and choose actor and this is going to be dynamic dynamic camera system and this thing's going to have several components most notably it will be the uh, camera itself and the spring arm it's attached to so spring arm and attach a camera to that as well like so So here you can see the spring arm and there you can see the camera. Um, we also want to add a couple more components that are not attached to the spring arm and they are our box collisions. So we need one for the start, for its start camera and we're going to do another box collision for the end camera. Now you could do this in multiple ways, I'm doing it in this manner. Um, because, for example, let's get rid of that, make sure it's not a child. Um, if you have a room that is not simply a box shape and you want the camera to start at a position and end a position, this would be the best case for it. If you've just got a whole room that is box like, you can make one collision object and make it just determine when it starts the collision and when it ends the collision to turn the camera off and on. But this will work in both cases, um, so we'll go through this method. So we've got a start camera and end camera, and as I said, these will determine when the camera will be activated or not. So let's go into our event graph, and I'm going to clear what we've got currently here. And I'm going to click on my start camera, and I'm just going to do a begin overlap. And choose the add-on component begin overlap. So this event will trigger when this start camera here is overlapped by any actor. Okay. So the first thing you do is check whether or not the other actor is the player character. Okay, so other actor we can then cast to, uh, in this case, to be a third person character. Turning this generic other actor pin into a specific pin of the third person character type. And what that simultaneously does is checks whether or not the player is the one that's overlapped the camera. You don't want the camera being activated by something else crossing its path. So once that's done that, we're going to use the um, get player controller. And we're going to set view target with blend. 
So this set view target with blend basically causes you to switch to a different camera and we can tell it how long it should take to blend between the two cameras. If you leave it at zero, it'll be an instant cut and anything after that will be the amount of time it takes to blend into it. The new view target will be itself. So we're gonna drag from the new view target here and go self. This new view target will have a blend time of zero currently, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a variable to this and we're gonna call this blend time and make that a float. And we'll drag that over to that blend time there. And if we were to click on this blend time and make it editable and expose it on uh, spawn, actually we don't need to do expose and spawn actually, we can get rid of that. You should be able to then, if I drag one of these into the world, you can set how long it takes to blend over here. So that's what the exp uh, editable uh, tick box does. So let's close that. Okie dokie, so once we've got that, we're going to need to do the opposite to get it to blend back to the player. So let's go to end camera and do begin overlap for the end camera. And you'll add on component begin overlap. And essentially it's exactly the same. So we're going to drag over there and plug that in over here. But this time, the target where we get player controller and the new view target will be from this as third person character. So you want to drag that over to there like so and click compile. So now, for example, if I drag this into the world and then I can choose the start and end locations by clicking on the start camera field like so and moving it wherever I want. The end camera like so. Ooh. And let's just move the spring arm up. Like so. And I'm going to change the blend time for this to be 0 0.8. I'll click play and if I walk into it it is now switched to that other camera now it's not dynamic yet it's just switched to a static camera but when I hit over the end overlap it returns back to the third person view, uh, viewpoint okay so now we've got that basic setup we now need to work on getting it to track and follow where the uh, player is uh, walking so let's uh, first of all start off by how that works out so when we have the camera, what we're doing, we, at first we need to store the location of the camera in relation to where the player is. And this is going to be useful for when we're calculating how to track the movement of the player in a tracking shot. So to create this offset, we're going to create a new variable and we call it offset. And this will be a vector. And essentially this is going to store the difference between the spring arm component and the player character. So let's go offset, drag that out and choose set. I want to right click, get player character and get the actor location of that character. Then we want to get the location of the spring arm. So drag your spring arm out and get location, world location of the spring arm and world location minus vector minus vector and connect that up to the actor location now you plug that into your offset like so click compile and there's our offset this is recording the difference between the spring arms location and the player's current location so now we're going to work on getting it to uh, determine when you want it to actually track the player so this is handled on a tick event so let's create a tick event. And the first thing we're doing tick is going to check whether or not the camera is the active camera. No point going through tick code if you don't need that tick code. So if I right click and get the player controller. And then from there I can get view target. And that'll get me the current camera essentially that is being controlled. 
So the get view target here will output hopefully the same as this. So you know, equals object and we want to make a reference to self. So if this camera is the current view target, go to a branch and the tick will then do its thing. Like so. Okay. So the next bit we're going to do is do a couple of functions. So the first function we're going to do is get tracking the player's movement. So we're going to go new function and call it track player movement. So the track player movement is going to take in one input and that'll be its delta time. And that will be a float. And from there, we're going to create a sorry, from delta time. We need to create a v interp two, and the delta time will plug into that. And the delta time is going to track the time that that is passed between the uh, different frames. And this v interp two is going to just control um, uh, an interpolation between two vectors. So basically, it's going to move from this vector to the target vector over a certain amount of time. So to track the player movement, we first of all need to get the act, this current actor's position. So get actor location, and we want to first of all get rid of the offset from this current location. So we go from return value minus vector, and the offset is what's going to be taken away from this. And this will feed into the current location. So that's the current location. We now need to work out the target location. This is the more trickier one. So what we're going to actually do is we're going to make it so the camera will only track onto the same plane that we would turn it to. So in my example earlier, it would only track from the left and right plane rather than the in and out or up and down planes. So to do that, the way I accomplished that was in the variables, we're going to create a new variable. And of course, we want to track player and this is going to be a vector and this vector value is going to have not be normalized so that means all the values will be between 0 and 1 um, and if the value is 0 that means that that plane will be fixed and not moving if the plane is 1 then it'll move with that plane so for example if I change the y value here to 1 then the camera will only move left and right if I change it to just z it'll move up and down if I'm going to use Y and Z, it will track left, right, up and down. So we can use these to accomplish the various um, different planes that we want to track it on. Now it's important to note that these planes refer to the plane of the level. So if I look at this gizmo here in the bottom left, where it says X, Y, Z, X is the depth in this, in this case, and Y is left and right. So that matters for that track player variable. And that track player variable is going to be editable so click the little eyeball there or make sure you tick the box in the details panel so let's begin working out the maths that goes into this so the first thing you need to do is get the player character's location player character and from there we can get actor location and that's the player's location currently in the game but we want to take that value and get rid of the ones we don't care about. In other words, the ones that aren't being tracked. So we want to multiply this by another vector, and that vector will be our track player variable that we just made. So that will give us the actor's location in just that one plane. But we don't want to set the camera just to that plane. We want to keep it in its current location, but not the location in this axis. So for example, I want to keep its X and Y location the same as here, but I want to change it, uh, so it's X and Z location, and it's the same as here, but it's Y location to come from here. So the way you achieve that is if we go down from this get actor location result here, we can drag that out, and we can uh, multiply that by another vector. And the vector we multiply by is the inverse of the track player variable. So the track player variable we can drag that out from here again and we can go into a uh, minus and we'll put that into the bottom pin 
So to inverse it, you just want to put 1, 1, 1. So if track player, which we currently got as y equals 1, the end result of this would be x equals 1, y equals 0, and z equals 1. And if I multiply that by the current value of my current axis location, it will take its current x and y location because um, if the x is 1 and z is 1, that means it multiplying 1 by the current position, it will remain that same position. But because y will be 0, if it's multiplied by 0, you get 0 out of it. So we've got the current position being here in, its x, in the x and z plane, and here we want it to take the um, the y plane from this. So what we do is take these two values and add them together. So take that from there, add vector, add vector, and plug that into there like so. And that should feed into your target like so. The final thing here is to output the return value we got here into a return node. So on the track player movement function beginning, click on the outputs new parameter at the right hand side and we're going to put in the vector output here Ooh, and connect that to our return value like so and click compile go to event graph and now we're going to put this into our world using the event tick okay so if this is true on the if tick and we currently are using this camera what we're going to be doing is we're going to create another branch to determine whether or not we're a stationary or a tracking object. So we can go new variable and we'll call it is stationary and that'd be a boolean and drag that out to get into a branch. Like so. so the stationary one that will allow us to determine whether or not the camera is tracking or is just rotating itself. So you want to make this editable, uh, so click the little buy ball. And so if it's false, that's when we do our track movement uh, function. So drag that out and hook it up to false. The delta time here is going to come from the delta seconds on the tick. So we can drag that in like so there. From there, we get an output of a vector and we can change the position of the spring arm by doing a set world location of the spring arm. And the new location will be the vector that we've got from our function. With that now set up, we have to go into our spring arm on the component list over here. And on the right hand side, you'll see an option saying do collision test. I'm gonna turn that off. That way the, the spring arm won't be hit by any walls or anything like that. Um, and we can, so we can have our character walk behind stuff. So I'm gonna click compile there. And finally, we're going to go up to where we do the offset. Here we've got the offset being set on the first overlap, the uh, start box. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do a do once uh, flow control. And so it only sets the offset once. Okay. If we were to change this all the time, um, you'll see some weird inconsistencies every time we go into this camera field. So if I go and push play now, and walk into it. I've turned on the visibility of the boxes so it makes it easier to test this. We can see it tracking the player's horizontal movement but not its up and down or height. So if I put jump for example, it won't track that either. Okay. So that's the the non-stationary camera system set up. Next we've got is the rotationary one. So what we're going to do is go into our camera again and we need to do something similar to what we've done here with the track player movement but this time we're going to be tracking the player's rotation so new function track player rotation and very similarly we're going to be doing a delta on this which would be a float very much the same as the other one and it's going to have one output, which should be a, the rotation, which should be a rotator. And click compile. Okay, so this one's a lot easier than the previous one. In this one, we're going to be using the function find look at rotation. And the return value of that is going to plug into our rotation like so. 
And the final look at rotation is going to look at the camera first of all. So the starting position would be the camera. And we're going to get the world location of that. And then we want to get the player character and their location. So get player character and get their location. And plug that into your target. And this function, find a look at rotation, will take these two vectors and work out through trigonometry the actual rotator required. So we're going to go back to our event graph and on the true branch of the is stationary, we're going to come up there and track player rotation. And that will also require the delta. Just notice I misspelled it, but never mind, we'll carry on anyway. And we're going to set the rotation of the camera. So not the spring arm, but the camera itself. Camera set rotation. And we're going to hook those up like so. And click compile. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on our camera we've got going on here. And I'm going to make it so it is stationary. I'm ticking the stationary box because we made it public. Play walk into it and now it will rotate the, around the world until I hit the end overlap and there you have it so they're the basics of how to get the camera movement like so now while working with a third person character there is something you have to do in particular for this character so to show you what the difference is in the third person character, by default, you've got the get control rotation. Instead of using that, we want to use the camera rotation. So instead of using the get control rotation, you want to get the player camera manager and then get the camera rotation of the camera manager. And then that will feed into your movement. That way, it will always move, treat forwards as in uh, the rotation of the camera itself, okay? Uh, rather than its control rotation. That way it doesn't feel so janky. So make sure you set it up to use these two nodes instead of the get control rotation. Okay. And that's kind of it. I believe that is all there is to this. Um, let uh, double check a few things. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Yes, okay, that's it, we're done. So thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions for future content, please leave a comment below. And this was a voted on video by my Patreon, so if you wanna be a Patreon and vote for the next video for next month, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryanair, just like everyone here has done already. And thank you so much to all these Patrons who've supported me in making this content and going forwards into making the future content. So thank you very much to everyone who's supported me thus far. Thanks very much for watching and um, I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.